Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. Let's talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 11, Episode 10, The Wrong Road. Let's get into, do you think Portia was set up? What went down? What happened? Like, OMG. But this ain't the first time some shit like this happened and went down with Candy being involved. Because at the OLG restaurant, the old lady gang, um, Apollo's fiance showed up to the party you know what I mean? When that situation was going down with Phaedra and, you know, um, Candy, you know, Apollo's fiance showed up. So what happened? What went down? Was this a setup or was it not a setup? Because, like, damn, like, Candy can't talk to her peoples and be like, yo, let's make sure that this is a great event for my husband because it's his, you know, 45th birthday party. And since Candy knows about this girl that Dennis has been messing around with because she heard about it through her assistant, so why not make sure that this girl don't show up to the party? Like, she don't know who's on a guest list. Is Was there a guest list that, oh, okay, maybe you can bring a plus one? Does she got to know who the plus one is? Is. like damn it went down like if it was my part I would try to make sure that if I'm if I'm actually trying to build a friendship or trying to build a cordial relationship with Portia I would make sure some girl that is claiming that she has slept with your been sleeping with your your um baby daddy or your fiance and I've been and if I was can I've been going around you know telling everybody about this girl that's saying that Dennis got you know her name tattooed on him and they just broke up weeks ago so basically Dennis and um, Portia relationship kind of overlaps with his ex relationship so that's you know that's what you know Candy's putting out there so I would try to make sure that she's not there so I won't look like I'm being shady and I'm the messy one and so that way I won't get any blowback but you know could could Candy have control who was at her husband's party I believe so and try to make sure that they didn't bring a plus one and did Candy assistant tell her that she was bringing you know Dennis's ex-girlfriend to the party where Portia and Dennis is going to be at and that is a hell of a situation when the ex is there and you don't know about the ex and the ex has been coming up in conversation now she's going now you both these go both these guys going to be at the same event that sounds like some shady shit and then what's even more shadier is you know Candy and Todd and the crew that Candy's meeting with her crew at the Candy Factory don't know that Portia's pregnant. And then Todd is like, you know, we have open box. So you know how that Hennessy is. You know, she, you know how Portia is when she get that Hennessy in her. So it's like, damn. And then it brings you back to when it was on a girl's trip. And Portia's like, you know, I'm going to pretend like I'm drinking Hennessy. And then she pulls the Hennessy into a container, put it under the sink. Like, why are you saving Hennessy that you took out, out of a bottle and you put it in a plastic container? it to marinate in the bathroom who were you gonna give that Hennessy to like come on was you gonna give it to Milo <laughs> you was you gonna give it to Nene like what's good so it makes you think like yo Porsche better not be drinking you know what I'm saying so I was just like yay what's going on so that situation went ham or whatever and I was just like mm, mm, mm. but we got to talk about Tanya Tanya and her outfit that she was throwing the host that party with with the black top no sleeves and the bottom of the outfit with the rainbow colors not rainbow colors but the design was very outlandish was very beautiful and then Portia showing up to Tanya's house and her little Sunday's best her southern her southern peach type of outfit she had on she looked good candy with that black and white top looked good too as well and also you know um what's her name Eva she gotta go like yeah she's the one that needs to make over Sh Shamar she looked nice that black and white that she had on was nice only thing is it's kind of loose because she's a small woman so she got to get it fitted but she's a small woman and it did look good on her Cynthia has been rolling around with her jeans and you know and her look Cynthia acts like she don't give a shit how she looks on camera she just worried about is Michael the Fox News mother the 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 Fox News sport analyst is going to marry her and give her that D because she is concerned about that D. Like, bitch, you should be concerned why you guys haven't seen each other in two months when you got money to fly to California. He got money to fly to Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like, they can they can make waves not seeing each other for two months. That's some shady things. And then on top of that, Cynthia is saying that her and her boyfriend or Michael, they never woke up in the same bed together. Like, they haven't even spent the night in the same bed together. Like, now, that is weird. That is weird, especially when you're a grown adult. Uh-uh. So, I'm just like, hey, baby, 
what is really going on with this situation. So Portia, she feels like she got set up. She's talking to she's talking to Dennis. She's talking to her sister. And basically, she's saying there was some there was two women, Jamil and you know um, Dennis's ex following her around or whatever, and they was going near Dennis, and she didn't know what was going on. She didn't know who they was. Then once she see them talk to Dennis, she's like, oh shit, that's his ex. And then she seen like the hug or or a kiss, or a, a kiss allegedly trying to happen, or whatever, and then she runs over there, she's trying to say, what's up, what's going on, and she demonstrates, she gets up out the chair, whatever, and she shows them, like, hey, what's up, you, whatever you can say in front of, whatever you can say to him, you can say in front of me, so basically, it seemed like she was a little aggressive, it seemed like she was a little loud with the demonstration she gave herself, even though she probably was just acting, asking a question, but it might have looked like it came off aggressive, and they might have felt like it was aggressive too as well, and whoever was watching it might have felt like it was aggressive too as well, and if they can hear Portia yelling over the music, the security, so then that's probably why they would escort her out. Dennis was talking about the woman tried to talk to him, tried to kiss him, and he did the Matrix, he swore curved her he curved her that's what he says that's his story and basically he's not really bothered about the situation and uh, I don't know why Portia's putting herself in a situation like that when she is pregnant you know you should she should have went over there grabbed her man tongued him down and started dancing with him and kept it moving and been dancing all night and had a good time and no drama but if that would have happened we wouldn't have the blogs with this story that they're using today and we wouldn't have them using this as a whole storyline for today because the whole episode was about Candy's party so it could have been a setup because you know they need something to talk about they need something to film about you know even though we think they might be popping, they got a lot going on in their life. A lot of the stuff that they got going on is probably not very interesting to watch on TV. You know, because they ain't giving us, they ain't going to show us the realness. So then over there at the candy, but Portia said something that was very smart. She said, you know, Candy didn't call me afterwards. She didn't check on me, see how I was, I was doing. She didn't come out there to check on me or anything like that. And I know why she didn't call me because she's over there having a meeting with the candy factory deciding what she should do. And Portia was absolutely right. Portia has gotten smarter when it comes to that situation with dealing with the ladies. But we'll see what the situation is going to be with her, with Dennis, because we see the next ep previews for the next episode, it shows her confronting Dennis and asking Dennis why he didn't tell her that he was still talking to his ex, and she thought all communication lines were cut off between Dennis and his ex. So now she said that leaves her to have lack of trust for Dennis. So there's something evidently going on that is true about Dennis contacting and talking to his ex. So we get over there to the candy factory. So once we get over there to the candy factory, you know, um, candy assistant is saying that, you know, Dennis grabbed his ex, ex by the elbow and was trying to have a conversation with her then he kissed her on the cheek and then that's when Portia showed up like what's going on over here and was basically you know hitting um Dennis's ex with her breast like breast beating her like pull like chest beating her and shit like that I was like damn Portia was ready to beat some ass you want you ain't gonna play no games with her and Dennis you should know Portia you should watch this show and know Portia will go off in a heartbeat especially when it's come protecting her man or somebody trying to embarrass her or somebody trying to disrespect her she's just gonna go with violence all day every day you know she had to go to anger management for one day on this you know uh, on the one of the you know seasons so basically they're having that conversation security or the person that's in charge of security over there at the candy factory is basically saying that Portia was loud you know she was aggressive and basically they escorted her out to leave because it felt like she was a problem and they're making it seem like candy has no idea what's going on candy had she, her and Todd are just oblivious to the situation, they don't know anything, which is kind of like fugazi, like, damn, somebody got kicked out of your party, you're not gonna find out why, Candy's excuse is she just wanted to make sure the event was perfect for her husband, because she spent a lot of money, yeah, we know you spent a lot of money, but if you really try to reconcile with Portia, 
you will make sure that you, on every, anytime somebody gets kicked out the party, what do they do? They go check on them. And we know back in the day on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta, getting somebody kicked out your party was the number one thing to do and one of the most embarrassing things to do too as well, getting escorted out of a party. But it wasn't filmed, so it didn't make it that bad. But the blogs blew up with the story, talking about Kent, talking about Portia, you know, got into a fight at Candy's, you know, party and was escorted out or dragged out the venue i was like oh shit so we have that situation going on i was like damn and so we have candy assistant saying that you know dennis contact his ex and said you're funny la you're funny huh why you do all that lol or whatever so he thinks the situation is funny he thinks it's a joke he thinks it's a game and he should not know he should know this this ain't game this ain't a joke you know, she's kind of, and, you know, Portia's kind of in a battle with Candy. Candy wants revenge. She wants reparation for what happened to her last season. And she's trying to let it go, but she ain't let it go. And then you're giving um, Portia's enemies ammunition to use against her to make it look like she's in a fugazi relationship. So she's feeling a certain type of way, but she took it out on the girl and not correcting you. And if Dennis, if anything, when you've seen your ex, you should have ran to Portia, grabbed her tight, you know, put your head, buried your head in her breast, buried your head on, and, and on her cheeks or behind her neck and just stayed away and all that. You know, as soon as you noticed your ex was there, Dennis, you should have ran to Portia because you know it's going to be some bullshit people watching and you are under a microscope because it's already been told on the season that you're still dealing with your ex, so you should have been prepared for the situation. If your ex tried to come and kiss you, you should have just ran, just ran. Just put your hands up, say, no, Jesus, and ran. Basically... Stopping the bullshit. So it went down like that. But starting off the episode, we got Candy and we got Portia arguing and cussing each other out. You know, Candy saying, you acting like a victim, you know, and all this other stuff. I don't want to hear that. And then, uh, and you're aggressive. And then, can't, then you know, Portia was like, um, I ain't no victim, bitch. I was like, oh, shit, because Candy said, you're so aggressive. Then calm down, victim. And then Portia goes, I ain't no, I ain't, I ain't no victim. Don't, don't, don't say that about me. Then Candy said, why are you calling me a bitch? And she was like, I call you whatever the fuck I want to call you. And then Candy was like, I'm getting up, I'm leaving because you're so rude. You're so ignorant. You shouldn't say all that, but she said, you know, you're aggressive or whatever. And you don't know how to control. You got so much to lose and you don't know how to control yourself. You're always ready to fight. And, you know, Somebody kissing, if Portia's seen another woman kissing Dennis, I believe she will go off and ready to tear that ass up. But in hindsight, Portia feels like it was a setup from the get-go. But you gotta, you can't let people control how the way that you act. And Dennis has to have your back more and be ready for the traps that will be set up for him too as well. Let him know what's up. And he should already know because Candy's been going around talking all season to everybody that this ex is still in the picture and Dennis is still involved with her. And, you know, they're cooking for him and shit like that. So, um, or when Portia got involved with Dennis, he was still with his ex because he just broke up with her weeks ago. So basically, you know, Candy is saying that with the rumors that she's hearing that, you know, the relationship that Portia has with Dennis is overlapping. So therefore, Dennis was cheating on you from the jump street, basically in so many different words. And it seems like Candy's trying to have that power trip because they had the power trip last season where they was using Todd, you know, you know, using Todd as a... Um, Using Todd, saying Todd was cheating on Candy. You know, they have threesomes. They got a dungeon. They tried to drug Portia and all that other stuff. And so now, you know, it seems like Candy's trying to use some ammunition. And she's trying to build up something to go against Portia because she doesn't feel like Portia suffered enough. And she ain't friends with her. So anything, anytime she can get some information or something that she can throw at Portia, she will. What she set up, it seems like it. It smells like it. Because the girl that Portia beat up, which is... You know, Candy is an assistant, brings Dennis' ex-girlfriend for drama. I don't know if Candy knew about it or not, but we know this situation happened before with Candy and, you know, Phaedra and um, Apollo with his his ex his ex fiance or his wife now who knows if he married or not but P candy was like i'm getting the fuck out of here you know and you know Portia was like you fake you fake you fake so we have that situation so what do you guys believe 
Was it a setup or was it not a setup? And, you know, Candy's assistant, Jamil, is like, you know, he called her. He grabbed her. He kissed her. I was like, damn, Dennis, are you that bold to do something like that? That means you got no respect for Portia. That means that you think Portia's really dumb and stupid and head over heels for you. That you will kiss your ex and grab her elbow, especially when your ex is still going around telling people that she's been with you or you still communicating and then on top of that that you that she was in the same she was in a relationship with you when you was with Portia and she's and she's telling people she's giving people ammunition to use against you and Portia and your current relationship so you shouldn't have to you shouldn't greet and you shouldn't say what's up to her point blank period we should be able to talk to our exes when we break up with them but if they're doing some shady shit behind the door you need to address it and not address them in public with people around looking and watching and want drama That is just my opinion. And so, moving on from that, you saw you got both stories. It's whoever you believe. And, you know, Portia really believes that it was a setup and she knows it was a setup and that's it. And even, you know, Nene believes that it was a setup. She believed that Candy's people is acting on the behest of Candy, you know, bringing the ex to the party. And they overstepping their bounds because Candy's allowing them to overstep their bounds. So I was like, mm, 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 it's going down. And so then we got, you know, Cynthia. Cynthia is getting ready to see her boyfriend. She's meeting up with her sister Mallory, basically talking about... Michael's coming through, Michael this and that. And then she's also talking about, you know, she hasn't seen him in two months. I was like, two months? You haven't seen your man in two months? And these guys haven't spent the night together? You know, woke up in each other's arms? That's crazy. And so Mallory was like, you know, Cynthia was like, oh, he wants to talk to me. He got something to say to me or whatever. And she was like, maybe he wants to break up with you. Then Mallory was like, oh, maybe he wants to, gonna ask you to marry him because I got married in two months. Since he's all giddy and all happy, here comes Michael. He only asked her to be his, his, his girlfriend. Can you be my girlfriend, baby? Be my girlfriend. Cynthia was hoping for something else. And Cynthia says she would marry Michael in a heartbeat if he asked her to because she's feeling him like it ain't nobody's business. And he comes in, he's kissing all over her. They're kissing all over each other. They're talking about they had sex on the countertop. It was like a little bit too graphic. And like, damn, if you miss her that much, you should have flew over last month or the month before to see Cynthia. Cynthia, if you miss him that much, you should have flew to see him too. I'm like, what's really going on with y'all? So anyway, Cynthia is a little bit disappointed because she wanted that hand in marriage. I can't blame her. So, moving on from that, we have NeNe Leakes, and we have Peter Thomas, and we have Greg. And basically, Peter Thomas is visiting NeNe and Greg, and Greg and Peter hug them. Peter turns ar- and then Greg turns around and says, hey, there go your boyfriend, NeNe. Like, damn, but we know, you know, Greg is basically saying Peter is NeNe's boyfriend, but he's, pro- he's joking, of course. But, you know, there was rumors around that NeNe wanted some Peter Thomas. There was rumors that NeNe and Peter Thomas hooked up or whatever, but they were never um, justified or found out to be true, and Cynthia never believed it. So there we go with that situation. So they're having a talk, and we fi- I find, well, Greg has a bag where it's used as his colon that's connected to his body. So we know Nene and Greg have not been having sex. There's no way you can tell me Nene's having sex with Greg with a bag on the side of him. Whether it's cleaned out or not, I just can't see Nene doing it. And she's happy that the bag is going to be removed. And Greg is going to get his colon back to working. You're working his intestine, working his anal. Everything will be functioning again. Congratulations, Greg. It's good news to hear that. They have a conversation about Porter. Portia fighting or getting escorted out of, you know, Candy's party. Peter said, I didn't see it. Nene said Peter didn't see it because he was over there promoting bar one, shading him. He was over there drinking, shading him. He was over there trying to talk to some young girl, shading him. Because I think Peter's in a relationship. Then Nene was like, you might know Cynthia's new boyfriend. And, you know, um, what's his name? Peter was like, oh, she really does have a boyfriend. I didn't know if it was actually, you know, true or whatever. She was like, in, she was like, yeah, Nene was like, you, you may know him. You know, he works for F- Fox Sports. And um, Peter was like, I only watch ESPN. <laughs> Shade. And Nene was like, Shade. Then they talk about Noel going to college and his biggest move in her, you know, biggest move. 
and everything like that. So, you know, basically they catch up. Then we got Tanya. She meets up with Eva. And Eva brings her husband, Michael. Tanya's boyfriend, Paul's there. Basically, Michael and, Michael and Paul know each other. They went to college together. They did a little scene, you know, making fun of the dinner that NeNe threw. Um, when NeNe friends came through and act like, oh, you don't know me, Eva? I was that bitch. So they did that scene. They made fun of the situation. Then they also end up talking about, you know, how Tanya, you know, shaded Nene about saying, when I feel in low, I get these glasses right here, which are Nene's glasses from, you know, Swag Boutique. And she was like, yeah, I got my back ripped off for that. I didn't know. You know, the, the other clothes I had on there, you know, they're a staple. You know, they've been around for 100 years, you know, and, you know, Swagalicious, Swag Boutique, you know, it's just, Swag. I was like, Nene's going to see that, not going to like it. And so, and they also, this Mala was like, oh, we thought Mala was going to slay. But Tanya came out with a whole storyline of her clothes. And her boyfriend, Paul, was like, that's how she gets dressed every morning. And then we have Eva was like, you know, I messed up too with, you know, Nene. Because, you know, I didn't invite her to the bachelorette party. So, you know, now I'm, you know, so I'm going to throw another party or whatever. Have another bachelorette party. So her and Tanya are going to get together, plan a bachelorette party for the ladies. And they get a globe to try to find somewhere to go. They're going to go to China. They're going to go to Japan. They're going to go to Asia. They're going to go somewhere. And they're going to invite the ladies over. Tanya's going to have a little fooding, a little outing at her house where all the ladies come through. But yet these two ladies don't know Eva or... Or Tanya knows that Portia is pregnant or anything like that. And they don't know that Portia and Candy has got into it. So they're just hoping to get back on Nene's good side. That's what they want to do. They want to get on her good side. But it seems like Candy's outnumbered because Cynthia is siding with Portia. Um, Nene has already sided with Portia. And, you know, um, and what's her name? Eva. And, you know, Tanya trying to get on Nene's good side. So, kind of, um, Candy don't have no friends around. Like, she don't have no allies. Maybe Shamar will be an ally, but Shamar's trying to get friends with Portia because her and Portia went to school together. They've been knowing each other for years, baby. So, we're going to see what happened with that situation. And then we got Shamar and we got Ronnie going to counseling. That's good. We find out that Shamar really wants to get back on the road. She wants to make music. She wants to sing. She wants to get out the house because she's trapped in the house. You know, she wants to have her own income. She wants to make some money. But she's also struggling with, you know, not being around her kids for a day or two or three days. It's going to be too much. And plus her childhood with her mother not being around, she don't want to leave her kids alone. And she feels overwhelmed when, you know, Ronnie is out on the road working and whatever. But she got nannies and shit. Come on. You ain't that overwhelmed. Imagine not having nobody. You got people in the crib working for you. Baby, they got a job to do is serve you and your kids. So we have that situation. And um, it is what it is. And so now we get to, you know, Shamar's part. We get to, you know, Tanya. Tanya's getting ready to throw her party. Eva shows up first. Eva outfit's crazy looking. We have, you know, every um, Porsche outfit was just dead on. And so was Tanya outfit dead on. I don't know where, you know, uh, Milo was, but Milo didn't show up. Nene looked all right. She had on all black. She was trying to be simple, Miss Simpleton. So we have that situation, and Shamar's all happy, and she was like, I don't want to get another DUI. A DUI, baby. A DUI? What's going on? I was like, Shamar, you got a DUI, and you letting the world know you got a DUI? I was like, mm mm, -mm. But before then, we get to Portia's house, and Portia's chilling with um with Nene and with Cynthia and with her best friend, um, basically, um, Shamia, and she talks about the situation, about what happened at Candy's party and her getting escorted out. And that's when Nene was like, yo, I think that, you know, Candy's people was acting on the behest of Candy. And Shamia was upset about it, too. And she felt like it was foul. Cynthia felt like it was foul. So right now, Portia got the team on her side. And they're thinking Candy is wrong about the situation. So now we get back to the poor tea. And now we get back to the party. Basically, as soon as Cynthia sees, you know, um, um, 
Candy, she's just like, oh, let's talk, Candy. You was wrong from the way that you did Portia. Let's talk about it. And Nene's like, damn, you know, Cynthia ain't got nothing going on. She got this, you know, imaginary boyfriend every two months that she see. And, she, and you know, Noelle's gone. She don't really got a storyline or anything that's going on with her situation. Instead of worrying about what Candy did and what's going on, worried about why the hell you and your boyfriend ain't flying to see each other. Let's focus on that. And stop harassing your daughter, Noelle, while she's in college trying to get a goddamn education even though you paying for it. So we have that situation. And then um, Candy's trying to explain herself was like, you know, Portia unfollowed me. You know, she deleted my pictures. You know, you think Portia was really calm? You think she really walked up to that girl and was calm with her? You know, she was a she was the aggressor. And she's telling Nene. And then Cynthia was like, well, that's not... Nene, Nene tell Portia's side to Candy. And so Candy's looking at Nene all mean and evil. Like, oh, girl, don't you start with me. And Nene was like... Nene was getting all choked up. Because Nene was like, this ain't my battle fight. I already got a man at home with a bag. And I'm dealing with Greg. I'm dealing with my husband and his shit, this is you and Portia, right now I'm chilling, I'm waiting for you bitches to bow down to me, I ain't trying to argue for none of y'all, that's how I felt Nene was taking the situation, but Nene will get crunk when she wants to, she got crunked over there on Tanya, when she was talking about her goddamn sunglasses, she got crunked, and she stayed crunked, <laughs> so moving on from that situation, we have that, and then you know, Nene can't spit it out. And so, um, you know, Candy's like, yo, what do you mean? You already know how Portia is. You think she was calm? You think she tapped the girl and said, hey, can I speak to you? You know how Portia is. And so the Portia walks through. She hugs. She kisses everybody. And she's all joyful, happy. And then, boom, the conversation starts. And she was like... You know, Portia was in a confession. was like, I, I really didn't come over here to talk to Candy about the situation. I just let it be. And so... Basically, they was like, Candy, you didn't even call, you didn't even come, and you didn't even check on Portia, whatever, and it, the story that hit the blogs, and the blogs is blowing up with the information, and Portia was just like, yo, listen, um, it was messed up what you did to me. Basically, you didn't call me, you didn't check on me, you didn't ask, you asked me how I was doing, but Candy was like, and, and you know, Portia was like, I called you, and I told you I just got kicked out of your party, you didn't come outside, you said, oh, I'm sorry for that, I apologize for that happening, I'll talk to you later, and you never talked to me later, and then Candy was like, I didn't talk to you later, but Candy did talk to Portia right after the situation happened, only because Portia called her, but Candy said she didn't know what was going on, and Candy was like, well, I, I came to realize after she was talking to the candy factory people, her, her partners, that I think that you should have called me because you the one got escorted and you got kicked out and you had to do something to get kicked out. Your behavior must have been rowdy. You must have did something. That's why you got kicked out. And so basically, we have that situation. And, you know, Portia was like, I got kicked out and all this other stuff. It's just like, damn, it's it's crazy because, and then you got Eva. Eva's like, we supposed to invite these ladies to go out, the, out of the country. Portia was like, I got kicked out. And you never called me. You never checked on me. You never said anything. And so, basically, Portia feels like she was set up. Candy feels like, you know, it was Portia's own fault because of her behavior. She needs to take accountability for her behavior. She's too aggressive. Look at you. You've been aggressive. Nobody can talk to you. I'm leaving. And so, basically, you know, it is what it is. Tell me what you guys think about the episode. Peace and my one love.